Well, I was going to demonstrate the magnetic bed, how you lift the, the magnetic bed up and just kind of bend it and the part pops off. Well, during the whole print, nothing moved. The magnets held, even at 60 degrees Celsius. The part came out pretty damn good. This is one I printed before on just the regular bed. There's a little stringing back there, yeah. This one's got a pretty much the same thing. That's the printer, not the bed. But the problem is I actually reached back here to, to lift the magnetic bed up and I bumped it. And it popped right off. <laughs> you can see where it was. But the idea is, is you pick the bed up and you kind of bend the bed. And it would pop off. Well, I didn't even have to go that far. It popped off all on its own. Came out pretty good. I mean, obviously, I still have to fix some uh, issues. Whoa, throw it on the floor here real quick. Fix some of the issues with the printer itself. There's a little bit of stringing in there. And way up there at the tippy top. You can almost see them. But otherwise... Then I was kind of wondering about the bed itself, how it would, how smooth it would be. It's not as smooth as glass. I mean, you can see the, the lines there. If it would focus. Yeah, there you can see the lines. So it's not as smooth as glass. Plus the other thing, it's a magnetic bed. So you don't want to put your 250 degree hot end into that material because you'll just melt it and ruin it. So I do have it set up a about half a millimeter, half a millimeter higher than I normally would on a regular bed, but this is still pretty smooth. Let's see if I can maneuver it around. And uh, can't really fill the grooves of the lines. Let's try the other one. Now this one was actually done on tape. Well, you can see blue painters tape. Shit sucks. Um, I don't have anything that's glass smooth that I printed recently. But yeah, it's not 100% smooth, but it's definitely smoother than most beds. I mean, I, I wouldn't even sand that. That's fucking... And if it sticks as well as this one did... Now granted, this is a smaller part. I mean, it's like maybe... I don't have a tape measure. I don't know. It's maybe an inch and a half square. Well, you can see it next to my hand. You can see how big it is. And uh, it's a smaller part. Didn't have any issues sticking, no lifting. And you can see all four corners. Um, the bed. Now that little piece there you see is from when I had the, the skirt around it. Apparently I didn't get it as clean as I thought. That's all that is. And then definitely with the beds, there is a direction. So the way it is now, it'll move if I put enough force on it. But if you turn it like this, there's nothing holding it. It's just, you know, it's just laying there. <laughs> but all in all, the only complaint I have is uh, I ordered it off eBay. I ordered what their description said was 220 millimeter, which I have a 240 millimeter bed. But with the, the bed clamping system that I have with the hot end or hot bed and the glass, I was going to leave myself a little bit of space, you know, like maybe a quarter inch between the edge. Well, instead, as you can see, they sent me a piece that was only 190 millimeters. Fucktards. So anyway, cut it out, made it fit. If I need to print something that's 220, I can do it as is. This um, piece is actually smooth right across. The white is what I put in as filler. And then as long as I stay under 190, I can use the, yeah, see, didn't stick. I don't know if you'll hear it or if you'll be able to see it click in when it catches. Eventually. Oh, there it is. Now it's stuck. Now I can turn it, well, 
Yeah, I can turn it if I force it. But right there is where it locks in. You got to put quite a bit of force on it to move it. So other than it being smaller than their advertised size, um, fucking shit works great. I only run it at 60 um, degrees Celsius because they say that heat will destroy the magnets or weaken the magnets. Supposedly it's good to 120. I don't print nothing at 120 degrees Celsius on a hotbed. I only use PLA. Um, I don't know if you can really see. Well, yeah, it's PLA, trust me. So normally right around 55 to 60 is where I run it. I normally use the... Uh, What's it called? XYZ or YZX filament. Fabulous stuff. I love it. It's not the most expensive. It's not the cheapest. But it melts. It prints. It does what you want. It's very consistent. I'm happy with it. And of course, I made some modifications to the printer itself. Duh. We all have. So, yeah. Thought I'd share. I just wanted to really test out that magnetic bed I'm gonna have to print something bigger well I misinformed you I thought the magnets were working on my last print you'll see where the, the center kind of rose up a little and I thought it was because I needed to recalibrate the height adjustment level of my bed well no the reason the middle is higher is because the magnetic bed is not sticking anymore and as you can see, I've got it taped down. Um, yeah, so these cheap beds, aside from being the wrong size, and still I'm only running at 50 degrees. There we go. My bed's only at 50. Their webpage shows that it's good, or can handle up to 100, which we all knew was wrong anyway. But for PLA, I only run it up to about 50. So, uh, I had some issues in the middle. As you can see, this print is gonna, probably going to fail, but I'm going to let it run out. It seems to be moving on now. It's part one of the Voyager Star Trek ship, if you're, if you're curious. Um, on Thingiverse, it's split into, I think, six parts. But, yeah, the bed's just not... I mean, it's sticking, it's still magnetic, but it's not really holding. It's lifting up and curling with bigger parts. And then in the middle, it definitely is not sticking and rose up. So I don't know if it's just the quality of these particular pieces that I purchased. I mean, it's, it's a generic one from, I got it on eBay from Hong Kong. It's not the size they said it was, and well, you can see where I cut it out. It was supposed to be 220, and it's only 190 millimeters. But uh, yeah, the magnets. Now, if you did not heat the bed up and you ran it at zero degrees or room temperature, I should say, it would probably be okay because it did hold for a number of parts. I made it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I made seven parts, and it actually did do pretty good. So if you didn't use the hot bed or the heated bed, these magnets would work. They just can't handle 50 degrees more than, you know, I mean, this part, I want to say it took six hours, if I remember right. We'll say six hours. It might have been seven, but I think it was six. But even so, it, it just can't take the heat. It's not, it's losing its magnetic magnetity. And you can see, actually, I think that one's aluminum. That one's steel. Yeah, see, there's, there's just nothing. Oh. These are steel, like dampeners for the motors. Yeah, there's just nothing. No magnetic, mag there's no ma ma uh, magnicity. So, 
Well, I shouldn't say there's none. It's just very, very weak. Yeah. So, excellent, excellent idea. The few times it worked for the smaller parts was fabulous. I mean, it, it works. The idea is great. You just need a stronger magnet that can take the heat. There's absolutely no way it can handle ABS or any of the others. Um, even PLA at 50 degrees. Um, I mean, if you're doing small, short prints, you know, that take, you know, less than a half an hour and then you let it cool, it might be okay. But if you're doing bigger parts or parts that, you know, run for a few hours and then try to do another one, one after another, yeah, it can't do it. When this part finishes, I'm going to let it all cool off. Let it cool for like half an hour and then try it again just to see if it comes back. Or if it does come back, how long it might last, if it'll finish a print. The one I'm doing now is only going to be about three and a half hours. Well, maybe long, because I'm 34 minutes in and you can see how far along it is. Oh, this is part A. No, this is a six hour print. Yeah. Yeah. So, don't buy the cheap ones. Um, I'm not saying the expensive ones are going to work any better. Um, but the cheap ones don't. Unless you use no heat whatsoever. It was great. I mean, the concept is perfect. You're getting that magnet to stick is the issue. Just want to do a little update before I post it. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Well, I went ahead and printed it fully out. Even though the magnetic bed wouldn't stay stuck, wouldn't stay level. As you can see here and here, there's some gaps because the bed wasn't level. Oddly though, this one, oh yeah, because it was printed this side up and this one was printed that side up. So the two the ends that were in the air met up almost perfectly. Pretty good size for my little printer compared to a pop can. Of course, it's in four sections. Oops, sorry. Now, the neat thing about my printer is pretty damn good details. My camera would pick them up. There we go. Now, when this was sliced, satellites and the, the external little tiny things that obviously would not print out were removed. I can't keep the focus. Apparently that paper towel is stuck to me. Oh, you can kind of see it. So you can see that there are windows in there. Never understood that on the show. I mean, you're in a spaceship. Who wants windows? And there's where the docking bay would be for the external ship. I did not print that out as yet. And then the hole for the mount, and obviously the big giant gap where the bed was not level where the bed was level where the bed was not but all in all the printer itself does damn good well, it is probably the largest piece granted it had to be glued together it's probably the largest piece I've ever made and other than that magnetic bed, it came out pretty damn good. Thought about using my uh, plasti pen and just welding a line in there and making it look like battle scars. Eh, it is what it is. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to take that magnetic bed off. And as you just saw there in the background, printed that with a friggin' fan behind here. It's like my other ones. Blew cold air on me while I was sitting here. Right the shit on me, because that was cold air coming out of there. So I made this little fan trap. It's got a big hole down here, and it blows straight down. <laughs> anyway, it works. That was without the magnetic bed, so it's like perfectly flat and smooth. This, hmm, not so much. 
However, this took me like three seconds to pop off that bed. That took me like 20 minutes to scrape off the glass. But it's pretty much perfect. I mean, no warpage. I mean, there's even letters in there. There's a little design I put in. The font, I mean, it's, you know. And then if I can zoom in, of course I ain't got no light. I mean, it's, it's as smooth as glass. I mean, obviously you can see lines. It's a 3D printer. But pretty damn good. The magnets, which this whole thing was about. I gotta say, I love the concept. I really do. But it needs to be a stronger magnet. It needs to be able to take at least 70 degrees continuously all day. If it can take at least 70, it'll handle PLA, PLA printing, which is almost all I print in is PLA. Um, printer itself, well, you can see my other videos. I'm very happy with them. Um, let's see if I can get it to zoom in. I think I need more light. Oh, wait, ooh. Yeah, so the details are there. The hole again for mounting. There's a little rough spot there. I'm not sure what that is. But, uh... I think I might actually spend a penny and get a little bit and throw it on the floor. Spend the extra money and uh, get the better magnetic bed magnet. Hell, I don't even know what to call them. Now, again, like I said before, for smaller parts, you know, I mean, you can clearly see about the size of my fingertip smaller parts are perfect they just pop right off bigger parts need a stronger magnet 